community have better policing. It's certainly not going to help the scourge of drugs uh, throughout this country, uh, suburban America, urban America, uh, be abated. None of this is going to be helped by, by this, uh, this, this protest and not going. So you have to ask, what is it about? It's about raising money, Laura Ingram. Just like we talked about yesterday, you must have been listening to the Mark Cox Show. Just teasing. Uh, Welcome back into the program. Uh, Glad that you're with us. Laura Ingram also admitting yesterday that she is considering a run for Senate uh, in Virginia against Tim Kaine. So uh, we will uh, talk more about that coming up here in just a minute. Who is a man that would risk his neck for the brother man? Shift! We have a uh, be on the lookout for some guy named Aaron Rodgers who apparently committed mass atrocities against 52 Cowboys this past weekend. Mr. Arps, do you have any comment on that? I'm heartbroken, but as I've said all season, I did not think the Dallas Cowboys had the defense to go all the way to the Super Bowl. It was, I'm just checking. Was a lot of I, holes in that D. So. I thought Super Dak would save them. Uh, he came close. Yeah, I almost He did. After I got your text message, I almost thought you were a Cowboys fan there for a minute. Hey, Are you I, rooting I, for the Cowboys? I, of course I'm rooting for the Cowboys. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm always rooting against Green Bay, generally speaking. Ah, I got it. So okay. uh, just, just to get just so we're clear on that, I mean, I have largely boycotted, and I hate that word given what's going on in uh, D.C. right now, I've largely boycotted the NFL this season. I just have paid no attention to it. Yeah. Number one, we didn't have a local team, yeah. which hacked me off. Number two, um, I, they're a bunch of spoiled brats, and they act like it in a lot of cases. Um, but, but like a friend of mine came to me and said, I've got to place my my bet on some fantasy league he was in. I don't even know how it works. And he said, what are you thinking these games? And I'm like, I don't even know what to tell you because I haven't watched 30 minutes of it all season. I, can't, I just can't judge so I was rooting for the Cowboys. I didn't know about this weak defense. Now you tell me. Oh, it's very weak. I mean, you know, <laughs> as I was texted to you, you know, it, it, they're going to have to win in a shootout because defense is very suspect. Well, and, and people are like, you know, it's, at certain times during the game, we're saying put Romo in. And I was like, what, at cornerback or safety? Because that's where we, we need help, not at quarterback. Yeah. Well, that's what I would have said. That is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard. All right, Chris. Thank you very much. So, I need to get your thoughts on this uh, John Lewis situation. I didn't see you chime in on Facebook about it. So, what are you thinking about the fact that he was all high and mighty on why he couldn't bring himself to attend this, and then we find out he did the exact same thing to George W. Bush? Well, hypocrisy and Democratic (laughs) Party, it's kind of pretty much one in the same but overall i think it's very unfortunate that he is taking this stance i think black people white people conservatives liberals either way would say that the black community has been suffering and has been ignored for the last eight years and you have a president who we all know is not a conservative who likes to make deals made overtures to african americans during the campaign that to just Shut that line of communication off because you're mad over over who won the presidency. And to be a, a member of Congress and to question the legitimacy of the election of Donald Trump, that's abhorrent. I mean, there were people that, you know, said Barack Obama wasn't legitimate because of the birth certificate and all that type of stuff. But there was never a sitting member of Congress or someone elected said something like that. And that is the difference that John Lewis is an elected congressman. You know, questioning legitimacy of the president of the United States, and it's a, it's very unfortunate. Well, you know, and and in the wake of it, it was kind of improperly tied to MLK weekend. I mean, it happened on Friday. Um, Trump made those comments, and everybody can automatically went to his defense as a great civil. How dare you criticize a great civil rights icon uh, on Martin Luther King weekend? Yeah. But I tried to make the point yesterday that there was no connection between the two as far as I'm concerned. And I don't think Trump saw it that way either. I could be wrong. And I'm not going to be jumping to his defense every time he tweets something errantly. Um, But I think people tried to make more out of it than it was by tying in the Martin Luther King connection. Well, I I don't think that... And they purposely did it like that. But I think the connection is there. I mean, you, to say that you're not going to attend the pre, the inauguration of a president, you're saying you're illegitimate, and then it happens during the uh, Martin Luther King weekend, you can see where those are kind of yeah, tied did, together. You think uh, 
Lewis was trying to hide behind that. I don't know if he was trying to hide by that behind that. I could see that I could see this as being very calculated and to say something like this during uh, Martin Luther King weekend when people's uh, senses are heightened about racism and the civil rights to say something like that to bait Donald Trump. I mean, it's no secret that uh, he's kind of got thin skin. And if you say something about him that uh, he's going to respond. So this may be a tactic that we may see for the next four years. Yeah, is, well, it's trying to bait uh, him into saying it, something. It, and like obviously, that. they're they're pretty good at doing that. Well, it's not. Hard. They know he's going to take the bait. Exactly. Maybe that's the better way to put exactly. that. Exactly. And I think I think John Lewis. I think he meant his comments. I think he wanted publicity, but I also think a little bit of that plays into it as they're trying to bait him into and to see he is a racist. Look how he's saying these comments during MLK Week. Yeah, he meaning me, my icon icon status is. Civil rights leader. I, I said it yesterday. I, the, the shame of it is, is that what he did, he did 50 years ago, however yeah. great it was, does not insulate him from criticism today. And I don't specifically, I didn't specifically remember him not attending George W. Bush's swearing in. But now that I read that Washington Post article, I do remember a group of people not attending. I didn't remember that it was Lewis specifically, but the group, the, the numbers have grown to like 45 or 46 members now. Certainly not all of them are members of the Congressional Black Caucus. I mean, they're whites and blacks who now claim they're doing it in support of Lewis but swearing that they haven't planned any of it. I'm sure it's part of it is the Congressional Black Caucus, and then it's part of people that are, are part of the Progressive Caucus. So they're, they may be different names, but they're all pretty much very far left-wing sure. people that are probably probably joining this. Yeah, so I mean, they should, better they off should, without them. They should take a, uh, you know, take a note out of Hillary and Bill Clinton's page. Even though, uh, you know, we may be against them as conservatives, but they're still high-minded enough to attend the inauguration. And how humiliating that must be to sit there on stage and watch Donald Trump take the oath of office. So I give them a little credit for their... Uh, Safe to say there will not be anybody in Washington, D.C. on on Friday with a bigger pit in the bottom of their stomach than Hillary Rodham Clinton. I, I don't don't, don't you me. don't you think that's true? I mean, it's it's probably the same way with, uh, you know, Al Gore when he had to watch, you know, Bush take the oath, oath and when he was in presiding over the Senate had to confirm that. So. That's a bitter pill for anybody if you're in that Yeah, but that at least she's got somebody to blame. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy. See? I thought it was a deplorable. No, no, no. This was from, what, 1993 <laughs> know, or 94. I, I mean, it, it works for it. It's still working, right? What right -wing. difference at this point does it make? That's what I keep saying. What difference does it make? Hey, Lynn, you're on the radio with Mark Cox and Chris Arps. What's on your mind? Well, uh, Mr. Lewis is just, um, shall we say, bloviating. And Bloviate. unfortunately, um, I think it was planned this way. I think it was planned on Martin Luther King Day. Hmm. Um, just to bring uh, home some sort of um, uh, connection with him in 2017 with Martin Luther King Jr. Second of all, um, I would like to uh, know why anybody gives Maxine Waters any kind of a microphone to speak into. She's an admitted socialist, and she's just out there for – she's a power-hungry, bloviating old windbag. And she just needs to be shut up because she's just a mess and a half. Maxine Waters. Is yeah. from St. Louis. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Ultimate, oh, figures. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I was going to say, the antics that these guys are planning are that, um, um, what's his name, got um, uh, uh, penetrated into. Oh, Project Veritas, yes. Yeah, Project Veritas. Yeah, the guys who are perpetrating this stuff it reminds me, because I'm old enough to remember uh, the Weather Underground in the 60s and 70s, reminds me of their tactics. Although they might not be as drastic as blowing up the Capitol or something, but uh, antics like this um, remind me of Bill Ayers and his group, and I wouldn't doubt very much if they're not part of the planning of all that nonsense. Yeah, I, you know, maybe maybe <laughs> deep in the background somewhere, you may be right, Lynn. Thank thank uh -huh. you very much uh, for for the call. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I I think that um, 
she's right. If you, if you watch, we've got that Project Veritas video up on our website now, 971talk.com uh, forward slash Cox. Is it on the news blog? Is that where we put it? And it should also be up. We'll put it up on my Facebook page too, the Mark Cox Show. Uh, you have you seen the video? I, I, so there's a at new a, one. I haven't. I just heard about. They're it. They're like at a table at this restaurant in Washington, and you know you can see the little uh, lapel right. uh, camera view of this from this guy's chest or wherever he's got this thing hidden, and these guys are gleeful at the yeah. thought of somehow setting off some acid into the heating and ventilation system of this building and chasing all of these people in their formal clothes out into the cold weather. They're thrilled at the concept of upsetting the apple cart and not letting these people enjoy their evening. They're going to they're going to interrupt this. Are they planning this or are they just saying They that were this planning is it. Okay. And they were talking about how to do it and now they've been turned into the police. We haven't heard if anything's happened yet. 3149699797 when we come back uh, we will check in with Rachel Sutherland from Fox News Radio, who's uh, 